4.50 in the clock running. Acadia in no hurry here. Sanibax was shut out earlier this year against Laval. Oh, it's blocked. The X-Men get to it. Into the hands of Keon Hughes. It looked like the block came from Von Muldorfer. Well, we thought that the turnover, the interception by Jennings was going to be the difference when Acadia got it. But this, and they didn't make anything out of it. Watch this one where the pressure comes and they block this punt. Hard to see there, but I believe it got blocked by um, Von Muldorfer. Look like Von Muldorfer coached, made the block, and then Keon Hughes hopped on it. Sure did, and this is huge. Now you've got to offensively really seriously get to work here. All right, so the X-Men with their best field position of the day, the 36-yard line. Again, they got high to break, who is good from this range, but the X-Men will be looking for six. Spread it out with Roseway. Eventually getting over there to make the tackle was Brandon Johnston. Um, maybe with three or four yards here for St. of X. Very little gain for the play, the distance that he ran because it was a great job by St. of X spilling that to the sideline. Good pressure and he just never got it turned up. And check that coach, just one yard for Roseway. Second and nine. Drama building here at Olin Stadium on Seniors Day. Jesse St. James makes the sack. His second of the day. So they have just been unable to block him consistently. The only time they've had success is when they double team. And with that sack, Jesse St. James ties Kareem Grant for the single season record. And it couldn't be a bigger one. And there you saw it, single blocking man on is not going to get the job done against this young man. So with one more sack, Jesse will have the single season record. And again, he's trying to chase down Rob, Juben Rob Jubenville, now only four behind him. Well, here's a gutsy play setting up for a 48, 49 almost yard field goal, maybe a fake, look out. The wind is blowing into the face of Hyde break. He's got the big leg. This would be his longest of the year. He comes up well short. Rennick trying to get it. He does at the seven. To the 10. And hard earned, earned, hard earned yards to about the 17 yard line for Rennick. Didn't get a real good foot on the ball, it seemed. And uh, over end, over end, and the wind would be a factor then just to hold it down. But Katie will have the opportunity here, and, you know, St. Evac still plenty of time left on the clock. All right, so Katie will come out here in the shadow of their own end zone as the shadows slowly over to take Olin Stadium late afternoon here in the fall time. As Blake Renick who was able to get that out to about the 19 yard line on the return. That's where Acadia will set up first and 10. So the result of the turnover is the same as it was when, uh, when Acadia had a turnover. They were unable to take advantage of it. Both teams leaving themselves short. Renick's had a good day coach. He's been, a, he's been uh, hard working anyways for Acadia, has a few catches. He's kind of, he's kind of like Eli Proc now's understudy. <laughs> he kind of looks just like him, the same type of player. Not as tall as Eli, good hands. Well, the one, you know, we go to, okay, what do these teams have to do to be successful and what didn't happen on the day? And I don't know that they went to their key players frequently enough. And by that, I would mean Brian Jones, for example, yes, he got a few. Proc now, yes, he got a few. But you know, yes, Roseway got a few, but you, Ashton Dixon is the only one of the key players that you and I see who's got work over the day. You gotta go to the, to the players who produce. First and 10 for Cluett. Nick Green has space on the far side, maybe about six yards for Nick. Brought down to the 25 yard line by Kuntz. Well, it's clear what they would like to do and just, you know, get a few first downs here, keep it on the ground so there's no interceptions. There's your three minute whistle. So we know where it's at right now. Well, again, coach, uh, the defensive battle here in the five nothing. Our player of the game might be on the defensive side and I gotta go with Jesse St. James right now. He's two and a half sacks on the day. He's tied Kareem Grant for the single season record, had that big one 
So look for maybe Jesse to be that player of the game. Should Acadia hold on? Still lots of time to go. Brian Jones, his biggest catch of the day, and a first down for Acadia to the 34-yard line. Well, that was a super throw, and he got it in there. Clue it did right into the numbers, and Brian Jones, very sure hand that makes the catch. Big first down, because right now you, what you want to do is just take time off that clock. Have a look here at your replay, locking up front. Look at that throwing with authority. To the 34-yard line. First and 10 for Acadia. Our first look here at McMintz into the game. He's on the near side, matched up with Holland. They'll go to Woods, brought down the backfield, and Woods kind of got pulled down awkwardly, but he's okay. And again, big Kyle Ford in on the tackle. Well, the problem really and why it didn't work was that Bobby Troop was in there at the running back spot and supposed to pick up the block and he was unable to maintain the block. And so that play was over before it began almost a loss of yard. Call this second and 11. Three receivers on the near side for Cluett. Woods, the handoff. Get some space. Front Jimmy Cunningham managed to chase him down from his defensive line spot. Maybe about five yards, call this third and five. So the defense has done what they can, stopped it. It could have been sooner, but they still got a minute 44, and that's a long time in Canadian football with the three-minute rules implied timing-wise. So they will have to punt this ball away, or a real gutsy call would be third and four to go on a fake punt, but I think the best play, the way these offensive are going, is punt the ball away. 144 left, five to nothing. Unbelievable storyline developing here. Again, the penalties have really hurt Santa Vex. Both offenses stalling past the 40 yard line of their opponents. Roseway, Drew Morris with a big hit. And Roseway down at about the 43 yard line. Well, you could see what he was trying to do. He was trying to get past that second man. The first man was being blocked if he made the right cut, but they didn't get a block on the second one. And, you know, give it to that young man for attempting to do that. Had he got it through there, he was, he had an opening for a good 15, 20 yards or more. Well, Coach, you could say it's maybe the year of the defensive player in the conference. I mean, we, we were talking earlier about who would be the MVP, and that normally goes to an offensive player, almost always. But it really is kind of the year of defense in the AUS, and we're seeing some great defense today, obviously. 5 nothing. Ashton Dixon trying to break outside, gets past DaCosta. DaCosta got just enough. Help came from Nogler, but a five-yard gain. Well, the problem with both the offenses today, and you saw it on that plane, is that the blocking is not there. And you have to be able to get on your block to allow these receivers and running backs an opportunity to then make their own moves. And consistently, pass-wise in particular, the blocking's not there. Second and five over the middle, looking for Tabor, it looks like. Tabor's got it. First down for the X-Men at the 52. Well, Tabor did a good job on holding on to that ball because he got hit as the ball arrived. It was last year, Coach, the AUS semifinal, a slugfest game. Acadia seemingly taking control, and then St. Avex in the final two minutes pulling out victory. Are we looking at the same scenario building? Devon Cook, Ashton Dixon makes the catch. Met and brought down. Cias gets over there. Brandon Johnson helped out. Acadia coaches a static to our right. Second and 12. Uh, St. FX, I believe, has used one timeout. They may have to use the other one soon because it's no good taking it to the locker room with you at this point with a minute four, and he didn't get out of bounds, so play will start as soon as the referee signal goes, and it started. 61 seconds to go here. Clock is running. Second and 11. Cook has Ridley. Close to a first down. I think he's got a coach. Brandon Johnson had the tackle, sorry. You're correct. Where the original catch was made, he had the first down. They need to move up, get on the line, call the play, because it's going to be, when the whistle goes, the clock's going to start. There's 50.8 seconds. They need to be ready to go. Hurry up, offense. This is what you practice. 
crowd is getting loud. 48 seconds left. Cook from the 40. Near side has Ridley again. The Costa can't secure him. Morris comes out, finally brings him down. But about a seven yard gain for the X-Men. 41 seconds remaining. They're getting closer and closer where they can take a shot to the end zone, but they'll need to have that, that timeout they have left used wisely here. Time is in. Second and three. And now the officials come in. Well, wisely, Katie Bench noticed there was a problem and Von Cook had lost his mouthpiece and time was already in. There you see him walking to the side. They used the timeout because now you have to use the pass and the sidelines. Anything caught in the field of play, you have time to get up to the line if you're efficient and get it set to run as soon as the whistle goes. That cost them probably about six to seven seconds, 34.9 left on the clock. Of course, what this does as well, Coach, if a, even if St. Evex should win this, Acadia would host the AUS Semi, but St. Evex still has a chance to win the conference if they win this game. When they, when they go to Mount Allison next week, they would have to beat Mount Allison by more than 10 points. That's correct. We call out, the, play out these scenarios, but first, they need to beat Acadia. They need a couple of big plays right now. Dixon in behind Devon Cook. Three receivers far, two on the near. Roseway in the flat, has the catch. Out of bounds at the 26 in front of DaCosta. He has the first down. And that's what I mean about using the sidelines to stop the clock. And now you don't have to worry. You can huddle up. You see them getting back in the huddle. It's not going to start until the ball is snapped. So the whistle starts. The whistle you heard, you see Coach yelling something in. The whistle starts only the 20-second clock. The game clock won't start till the snap of the ball. Dixon in behind Cook. Going for it with Roseway. And coverage down there, a flag on the play. Hastings had coverage. St. Evex think they have the interference call. It is, it definitely was an interference call. Defender, not an unwise move, but looked like he felt he might have been beat, so he ran through the receiver, tried to make it look like he was, but he wasn't playing the ball. Here's the call. It'll be 15 yards from the original line of scrimmage. It was one on one. Oh, he got, looks like he signaled two penalties, one interference and one contacting the receiver. So we'll see how that goes. But wow, this is huge because it's there for them right now. Finally, and there's 24.2 seconds. There are two fouls on the play. The first foul is illegal contact on an eligible receiver, Acadia. It's been declined. The second foul, pass interference, Acadia, 15 yard penalty, first down. St. Evex from the 12 yard line now. Have a look at the replay and watch the body contact right here. See how he kind of pushes with his hand and runs through pretending he's looking at the ball. All right, second or first and 10 from the 12. Dixon and play blown down again. Vince Williams comes running in. Timeout to Acadia. Acadia takes the timeout. Coach happened to get way up the field to get the call in because the linesmen are nowhere near him. 24.2 seconds remaining. The X-Men can get a first down. Uh, still, again, at the 12-yard line. If they do, they would be uh, first and goal to go from about the one or two-yard line. Well, Coach, what are we looking at for a play call here? What do you think we're going to get from Santa X? Well, I mean, you, there's going to be some heat coming, big time. And so I'm suspecting that if they're going to be in a pass pattern, it's got to be quick. So something down and out on the goal line, for example. Devon Cook can run at times. If they can seal a corner, that's difficult. Uh, you know, against St. James. So you, in this case with St. James to the wide side of the field, the field side, they'd have to go boundary and that limits you, his ability to run because you're on the shorter side of the field. In this case, looking at it, it would be to the offensive left. That's the short side. St. James is to the wide. Otherwise, I'd like him to roll. So I'm looking for a something and maybe across a, a the, the middle on a drag route right at the goal line. First down and 10 from the 12 for Tavon Cook. Looking for Ridley. They're going to go into the end zone for Tabor. <laughs> Coverage over there. That's a catch. That is out of bounds. Acadia, Acadia coaches think it's a catch, but it's out, coach. Well, he was running along. You know, they were looking for an out rather than a 
crossing pattern and have a look on the side. He's got to get one foot inbounds after he makes the reception. That was Brandon Jennings. Foot came down on the outside of the white line, so he's out of bounds, but boy, that was a heck of an effort. But 18 and 18 seconds. Acadia coach is trying to get the look. It was out of bounds, coach. So second down here, second we down, tough situation. For our friends at home, we got the Acadia coaching staff right behind us, and they were trying to get a look at that, and it was out of bounds. 18 seconds remaining here, second and 10. Cook again for Roseway. Roseway makes the catch. There's a flag on the play. It is a touchdown. We'll wait for the call. Well, the, it will be interference. A defensive player pushed. So we'll wait and see. I'd be surprised if it was not against Acadia. They're asking Tabor. Play in the play. It's for pass interference. Acadia. Touchdown, State of X. Touchdown. X-Men lead six to five. Devon Cook to Roseway. Good fighting. Roseway turns back to the pattern, does a great job, and they've left it to the last second. We, it looks like deja vu all over again, <laughs> like last year's game. Very little time left. 13.5. Had to break out there for the point after he has not missed this year. So they're correcting the reason the time was stopped. They're correcting the time clock. No problem for a high to break. He's 15 for 15 this year at extra points. Well, how huge was the missed field goals? Katie having a great opportunity uh, earlier and missing the field goal. And wow, Cinevex, how late can you leave it? This changes a lot with 13.5 seconds left in the game. Even if the game finishes at Mount Allison with a, a Mountie win, it, X is still left open the possibility of going up there and beating but would have to be by more than 10, but you're back into that same situation. Yeah, you know, if, if Acadia loses this game and St. Vex loses next weekend or doesn't win by 10, we will be in Wolfville for the semifinal. Um, so the other scenario, again, is Acadia also then has to beat uh, the Huskies, though. they got to take care of business of the Huskies uh, as well at, you know, on Seniors Day next weekend in Wolfville. So still some scenarios to go. But again, sec for, in, for the second time in, a, in 12 months, Acadia just kind of one play away from securing victory. Last year in the AUS semi, today here, Sanivax coming back in the final two minutes. Acadia still has time, 13 and a half seconds. And just like last year in the semi, they may have time for one play. How to break will kick off. On the turf, a high bounce for Troy Harrison. He'll soldier forward to about the 37-yard line, and that's where Acadia will start, set up on, for what should be the last play of the game. Well, again, it, it, it comes back to haunt you, the fact that, you know, maybe your field goal kicking after Benjamin left, it's really been a toss-up, and because they do have time for probably two plays here if they're quick, but You've got the receivers, and it looks to me like the two plays are going to have to be downtown because you're not going to have a chance really to get into field goal position. Don't know whether Acadia has one or two timeouts left, but 7-5, all they need is a field goal, but I don't believe their kicker has the distance unless they get inside the 35-yard line. All right, it is Cluett. He'll try to air one out here, or at least come underneath. He'll air one out. McMims on the near side, and once again an interception. This time it's Hayden Peters. He'll head to the turf, and Sanivex are going to get a win here on Seniors Day. Well, a great play, and just taking the ball and then downing it because time had run out. What an unbelievable turn of events. That is it, Sanivex. A late touchdown will win seven to five. Razor Lalani coming up with your post game interview, Coach. She's actually ready to go. Let's on head on down to Razor when she's ready. She's with Devon Cook.
All right, thanks, Bill. I'm here with Javon Cook, the quarterback for Santa Fe. Can we talk about what was going through your head when you were throwing the ball for that touchdown? Just put it up, make, let him make a play. Rangers make making plays all year for us, and we just got to let him go up there and make a play for us to win the game. And how do you think you felt about the rest of your performance for today's game? It was okay. It was okay. We played four quarters, which was good. The defense balled out and the offense pulled out on the end. It was a good team win, but the offense needs to pick it up next game. And what do you want to take away from this game for next game other than the offense? That we can play four quarters and we can win game-winning drives. We can win against so any team. All right. Well, you know what? I know your team is really proud of you, so go shake hands and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Bill. Number two. All right, that's one happy quarterback right there. And for, again, Coach, you know, the, the similarities between this game and last year at the semifinal, uncanny, including the comeback. Uh, but that, that's a, we've been waiting for a signature win for Santa Vex this year, and they got it. It, it. it was an unusual game, to say the least, and that was the only time we saw an offense on either teams give a sustained drive, get in a scoring position, and finish it off with a touchdown with 13.5 seconds left to win the game. That the game was still that close was unbelievable. Well, Coach, it was a good one. We'll see you next week in uh, Mount Allison, my friend. Thank you, sir. Coach John McNeil, again, will be back with Coach next weekend at Alumni Field. Well, oh, man. It was uh, not pretty for a while. 5 nothing for Acadia throughout most. Back and forth they went. Both teams really struggling to put up points, moving the ball through the midfield with no problem, but just couldn't finish. Cook had himself a great day once again, efficient. And of course, Randy Roseway, always with speed. Ashton Dixon had himself a great day. Over 100 yards rushing again, nearly 200 yards, all purpose, breaking one outside. But in the end, Tavon Cook, in the final two minutes, eventually able to pull out a win for St. of X. We're on the road next week. Again, Coach and I in Sackville. We'll be in Mount Allison for the, these X-Men and the Mounties in a game that will have Loney Bowl implications. Here's your touchdown pass to Randy Roseway. All right, so we'll see you next week in, in, in uh, Sackville with me and Coach. You're also in Wolfville with uh, Mike and Steve for the Huskies and Acadia. Scott Squires is, is the executive producer of the AUS on TV1. Sean Seneschal is your game day producer. Thanks to 45 North once again for raising the Lanny and the coach, John McNeil. My name is Bill McLean. Good night from uh, Anaganish.